Nemesis. This is Professor Wang. In this video series, we are going to show you how to run a computational fluid dynamic simulation using Flow360. The first step of performing any computational fluid dynamic simulations is to build a CAT model. Here we build a CAT model of a wing starting from an airfoil. We are using the NACA 0012 airfoil. It's a symmetrical airfoil with 12% thickness to cut ratio. We see we get an airfoil, so this is what the NACA 0012 airfoil looks like. Notice that it is in the XY plane. We are going to rotate it into the XZ plane. You are going to see why we are doing that in a moment. Now the airfoil is in the XZ plane. So we can build a wing whose spanwise direction points towards the Y direction. This is going to be our root airfoil. So we're going to translate it by minus 0.25 so that the quarter cord is in the origin rather than the leading edge. Then we are going to scale the airfoil so that the cord length is the desired cord length of the root airfoil. We're going to further rotate it around the y-axis, which is the spanwise direction of the wing, by 15 degrees. That is going to be the pitch angle of the root cross-section. Now we have the root airfoil. The next step is to define other cross-sections. Here we define a simple wing just using two cross-sections, one root and one tip. For the tip airfoil, we use exactly the same NACA 0012 airfoil. The core length of the airfoil is going to be 2 as opposed to 3 at the root. And the pitch angle is 0 degrees. We are further going to translate the tip airfoil. This defines the plane form of the wing. If you want to increase the span of the wing, you can increase how much you translate the tip cross-section in the y direction. If you want to increase the sweep of the wing, you can increase how much you translate the tip in the x direction. Now we can connect the root and tip airfoil cross-sections using the command rule. As you can see, once you roll these two cross-sections, you get a solid body. Alternatively, you can use the blend command that not only connects these two bodies, but also creates a nice, smooth, rounded tip of the wing. This completes the model of the wing. But in order to match the airplane, we also need to distinguish different parts of the airplane with different attributes. Now that we are adding two different attributes for the wing, face name and group name. Faces with different face names have different mesh resolutions when you are meshing the airplane. But faces with different group names will be grouped together when computing the forces and moments in the CFD process. We can also set the name of edges. In this case, we set the name of the leading edge to leading edge because in the meshing process, we want to designate the leading edge to be an area of specific refinement. As you can see, we are selecting the leading edge using a series of points. Engineering sketchpad is going to select this edge that lies along this series of points. We can do exactly the same thing to the trailing edges. As you can see, you can go back to the graphical user interface, press the keyboard number 6 and hover your cursor across the edge to select that edge and verify that these attributes are set correctly.
Uh, finally, we're going to translate the entire wing by three in the x direction and one in the y direction. That is a preparation for our fuselage, which is coming next. Finally, we store the wing so that later on we can use the wing as a discrete body in later building process. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.